My name is uh, Patrick Eklund, and I will speak about uh, quantals, quantals, uh, how they are applied in various contexts. What I want to do uh, is uh, to explain what quantals are in relation to distributive lattices. Distributive lattices are very well known, <coughs> quantals less so, and also uh, for the reason that uh, distributive lattices are special kinds, very special kinds of, of quantals, and therefore it's a bit surprising that the many-valued community, including ISMVL, has been so fond of using distributive lattices, but are much less aware of, of, uh, of quantals, which are which we will see <coughs> are semi-groups uh, that uh, are distributive over over the disjunction operation in the lattice. So uh, I show you, I show you some slides which basically is related to this distributive lattice as connected with uh, with uh, quantals, and then I will show you some details in the in the paper. So indeed, distributive lattices are very special kinds of quantals. Also. Uh, there are very few distributive lattices as compared to having quite many quantals. Um, the paper indeed advocates the use of quantals, wants to raise awareness, wants to increase curiosity about using quantals. Uh, so, and uh, and uh, obviously I, I do not say that we need to replace distributive lattices. Distributivity over uh, this junction is still important from application point of view. With quantals we only have more options, more operators uh, at hand. Uh, obviously we also look at finite uh, structures <coughs> where the underlying set is uh, is finite. For lattices, uh, this means that we deal with complete lattices. Indeed, a complete uh, lattice with, uh, with bottom and top elements is distributive if the semigroup operation, join operation, is, uh, is preserving over, is, is preserving in both of the variables. <coughs> Uh, distributes over meat. Uh, note also how uh, uh, the view that uh, the lattice operators are logical operators and and uh, and in some sense the only one stems from the fact that when we are in the binary situation, we indeed have disjunction and conjunction as the main ones. Uh, and they are logical operators, but when we go to many-valued cases, they are not the only ones that we can that we can work with. The situation in the binary cases, we have 16 binary operations, two of which are and and or, and there's a representability. It's well known that we can represent all functions uh, uh, simply by by one particular function, which is useful in electronics. <coughs> when we move to many-valuedness. This simple situation is no longer valid. And uh, nevertheless, it's been surprising to me for, for uh, decades actually, why the many-valued community is still much stuck with the approach that the logical operators uh, arise from the underlying lattice rather than investigating other options for semigroups uh, that uh, distribute over, over, over join. In, in similar ways. <coughs> so distributiveness obviously remains important, but uh, meat is not the only semigroup operator that distributes over, over join. Note that um, in the case of uh, uh, two elements, binary case, we have one <coughs> lattice, the chain, which is distributive. In the case of three elements, we still have just one lattice, the chain also distributive. In, in the case of four elements, we have the chain and the diamond, both are uh, distributive, but when we go to five elements, only three of, of five are distributive. And when we go beyond, when we go to five, six, and seven, uh, uh, we have in fact uh, uh, proportionally uh, much less distributiveness in the 
lattice. Uh, so what, what I say at this point is that when we go to five valued, six valued, seven valued and so on, it is a severe restriction in my view to continue to work only with lattice operations as logical operators because we indeed have many other semi-group operations to work with. You will see how many actually. So what we say is that uh, conjunction is not the only interesting semi-group op op operator that distributes over meat. There is a large amount of semi-group operators that distribute over <coughs> join and in the underlying lattice. And note that uh, <coughs> meat is a very special, a very special case of such an operator. So distributive lattices indeed are very special. They are very restrictive, they are very few. They are not bad, but you don't have many options to work with if you work only with distributive lattices. So you may add a semi-group uh, operator uh, so that we have a structure with the lattice and an additional semi-group uh, operator. <clears throat> and now we are interested in those semi-group operators that distribute over, over join. And indeed the special case is that that uh, the semi-group operator is uh, meet, then, then we have a very special case of a quantile. So distributive lattices are quantiles as a very special case. <clears throat> and uh, indeed this paper suggests to look, to look beyond <clears throat> this special case and, uh, and uh, these structures are indeed called quantiles. So a quantile is, uh, <clears throat> is a, uh, a quantile is a, um, Tuple with a semigroup and a complete underlying complete uh, lattice, so that the quant so that this semigroup operator distributes over over join. <coughs> so uh, that 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 was the background to to motivation why why quantiles are are interesting, and then I will switch over to switch over to some detail <coughs> in the paper. And, uh, and in fact, I have I have some five minutes, uh, some five minutes left to do that. And in the paper, you see, I underline similar things. I underline sim similar things in the paper that when you are in three valuedness and even in four va valuedness, the algebraic complexity is still very low. So you don't see the be be benefit of the large amount of quantiles until you come to five, six and seven and beyond number of elements. So for instance, in the case of five, <coughs> where we have three distributive lattices only, there are five, in four, five elements, there are five different uh, lattices, uh, three of which are distributive, but there are 1,852 quantiles as a whole. Those, those, five, uh, those five are, uh, are, are here. And if you look at the numbers for the chain, we have 1003 uh, quantiles. For lattice number two, we have 78 quantiles for this one. No, no, no sorry, for, um, for this one, which is a special case of a five, five point <coughs> lattice. When we go to when we go to six elements, <clears throat> when we go to six elements, we have uh, <clears throat> we have fifteen lattices, one of which is the um, the um, the chain, and then we have thirty three thousand three hundred and ninety one quantiles. For the chain, we have uh, more than eleven thousand quantiles, and you see we have a few thousand. Or often we have uh, a few thousand quantiles for each lattice. What I want to say about these uh, lattices is also that no note how uh, some of these six-point uh, lattices are kind of derived from five-point lattices. So, for instance. Number eleven, you can view as the as the five point lattice where you add a sixth element, or the five point lattice here where you add a sixth element. Uh, here you have a situation that you have a six point uh, lattice which is not derived from a five point lattice. This one is also not derived from a five point lattice, nor nor this. Also, I want to underline that uh, that. Uh, 
the effect of sideline elements. If you look, for instance, at hysteresis and you look at the kind of underlying implicit lattice structure, non-chain lattice structure that you have in a hysteresis. Sometimes a hysteresis is described approximately like, like this type of a lattice. Sometimes you, you might intuitively view a hysteresis like the, this type of a, a lattice. What, what is interesting about these types of, if you take for instance, take for instance, uh, take for instance this lattice here. Note how you have a five uh, element sub chain where you have one element that is kind of on the sideline. And there are interesting semantics that you can attach with such uh, sideline elements. Sometimes, for instance, you can even use uh, sideline elements as uh, missing data, not, not yet known data. Or sideline elements can have another type of qualification than the other the other five. Note also that if the sideline is in the upper part, this is kind of an optimistic sidelined element, whereas uh, an element uh, that, that is sidelined more, more below is more of a pessimistic sideline element like, uh, like here. So this, this is what, what I wanted to say in this talk. Also, finally, note how certain six-point uh, lattices are, are uh, derived. For instance, in this case, it's the product of a, of a two chain and a three chain. This type of a lattice is a certain function space construction. So uh, some uh, bigger lattices indeed are seen as, as uh, constructions or smaller, smaller ones. The paper indicates uh, some uh, <coughs> application directions in circuit uh, design, we have also applied uh, uh, quantals, uh, for instance, in healthcare. One typical example that we have used is, uh, is the World Health Organization. Within the World Health Organization family of classifications, the so-called WHO FIC family of classifications, which contains disease classifications, uh, uh, intervention classifications uh, and functioning classifications. The functioning classifications is a, is a nice uh, five scale where there are sixth and seventh elements which relates to not yet known and not applicable. So in this case, you can, uh, you can nicely apply quantiles for computing with the functioning values in, uh, in healthcare. And I will, uh, I will stop there and I invite you to work on these quantiles and please let me know. I will be happy to work with you all. Thank you very much.